this week reminded me how crazy life is when you are actually selling flowers. It gets really, really difficult to balance the farming and the floristry. My name is Vanessa, and I'm growing a cut flower farm in Edgewood, Washington, Zone 8B. In 2017, I started growing cut flowers in my grandfather's garden to aid him in a romantic endeavor. And now, with the help of my partner, we're building a business and a community around the local flower movement in our little corner of the Pacific Northwest. Welcome to Pops. Hey guys, it's V. Welcome back to the farm. I am heading outside to turn on the irrigation for field A because it desperately needs water. This week taught me anything. It's that balancing, farming, and even YouTube when you're doing sales and focusing on floristry is really hard. It had been a little while since we had done any flower sales and I just forgot how hard it is to be in the height of summer with your fields and also doing sales and of course uh, content creation. We did get to work on some irrigation projects this week and getting this guy on was one of them. So this is a four-way splitter. This one goes to our new bucket washing station. These are open obviously and this one is field A irrigation. So as you may have guessed, our week ended up getting dominated by our pop-up, which was today, Sunday, from 9 a.m. to noon. We did manage to get a few other tasks, farm tasks, done that were on our list that we mentioned in last week's vlog, but not as many as I would have liked. Hello, peas. I'm going to come harvest you tonight. Oh, Lord. These need water, too. As a result, I don't have as much B-roll as I would like to have, but... We're going to carry on. On Tuesday, I went ahead and got my field chores done. I caught up with some of the brides that we're working with for 2021, and I absolutely deep cleaned the cooler, which was completely essential because, like I said, we had a pop-up on today, Sunday, and by the way, it went amazing. As you can see, the lawnmower is still broken, unfortunately. But that didn't change the fact that on Wednesday, I had one job and one job only. And that was to fill the cooler with flowers. And of course, that means harvesting. Everything in the field that was ready right now was part of our cold hardy annual experiment. And I was really, really, really sad to see it all go. Some of the stuff I had grown for the very first time, including this stock that I talked about in last week's vlog, and this Bupleurum. I absolutely love Bupleurum now. It was my greatest find from the Cold Hardy Annual Experimenting we did. I will definitely be growing tons of both of those things every year from now on. We still needed more flowers in order to meet our needs. We do source from other American farms, American only. We do not use any imported stuff. So we ended up getting a bunch of peonies from Drew at Clara Joyce Flowers, along with some really beautiful status from him. And we made a trip to the Seattle Wholesale Growers Market on Wednesday. Our other source of flowers this week was from Kelly at The Floral Source. We ordered the Sunflower Bunch and it worked absolutely perfect for our needs. Some of the tasks we had on our list were things like cleaning out the shed, which I totally got done on Thursday and it's so much better. I also took advantage of that opportunity to make a bucket washing station right by the cooler. That whole area of the farm is where we do so much work and it's finally starting to get truly functional. After the shed was cleaned out, I went ahead and started making bouquets. And let me tell you, I made a lot of bouquets this week. That job went well into Friday, and then on Friday, I also made all of the new signs for our farm stand, put a final coat of paint on the table, and received a few final packages, including, well, I'll wait for the reveal. I still can't get over the larks for you guys. I really didn't think I could grow this. Oh 
One of the projects we also got done a little earlier in the week was, like I said, working on our irrigation. Not only did I set up that splitter up by the veg garden, but Farm Husband also put in some work on the irrigation in Field A. The problems we were having is that our irrigation kit was a very simple, basic beginner kit, and it was either all on or all off. The problem with that, though, is sometimes you need to water some rows and not others, depending on what you have planted, how old the crops are, what the crops are, etc., etc. So we got these sweet new valves. They do need a little fine tuning, as you can see but they allow us to individually control the water access to each line on each bed. And that is game changing. Go ahead and let Farm Husband explain it for those of you who would like to know the technicalities in one minute or less. We've got the old header here. And uh, what we're trying to install right here is some new valves so we can turn them off and on individually. We've got the wrong size here. So you can see, this is the one that we're trying to fit in there. If you know anything, you know that that don't fit. Make it a little bigger. Make sure this is set up. Pull her out. Stuff the new one in. Tightened it on there. Gets a good seal. Better than these old ones that didn't have that. Pulls it on tight. Pop the old drip line off of the old connector there. Easy screw on connection. I'm gonna throw it onto this spinner up. Good to go. That's uh, two down and, uh, you know, 14 to go. I am happy to say though that the pop-up, like I mentioned before, was a huge success. I had an absolute blast. We sold a ton of flowers and turnout was amazing. The balance might not have been there this week between farming, floristry, and YouTube, but in a lot of ways, it was a really great week. And to be honest with you guys, my favorite thing about the week was the way the farm stand turned out. What I love about the new farm stand is that it looks so on brand. If our web store was a physical entity, it would look like the way the farm stand looks now. And there's a lesson here, because as you know, we were hoping to build a farm store, a walk-in building that you could shop at every weekend. That's like the dream. Even went so far as to put together a spring subscription drive to help fund that farm store. But as many of you know, we didn't quite hit our goal. If you've been watching our channel, you understand that we then opted to downscale our farm stand ambitions, which was pretty timely because the whole COVID thing sent lumber prices through the roof. But like I was saying, there's definitely a lesson learned with the farm stand. Sometimes you get what you need. And sometimes when things aren't in your control, they turn out better than they would have, even if they were in your control. Okay, so are you ready to see the farm stand? I was really happy with how the table turned out. The umbrella looks amazing. That was the item we were waiting for that got delivered on Friday. The signage turned out great. I think the rug is a nice touch. The two table system worked really awesome. We have one huge table to display and then one table for me to sort of work at and be a cashier at. I love it so much. So that is the result of our super long, really hard, busy week. It was so worth it. We had such a blast. I honestly hadn't seen our customers face to face in months and months and months. So it was amazing. And things are developing. My dream of the red garden continues in the front of the house. 
Obviously the grass is getting long, the moles are taking over, the weeds have completely won the war. But my beloved mother dug up some old relics from my childhood and it's those two pots over there. Those two red pots. These two pots have been in my possession since I was a girl of 18 years and I lived in my father's cabin after he passed away. These were one of the first pots I bought and I filled them with dahlias and I didn't actually start growing dahlias or fall in love with dahlias until seven years later, but in a way it was pretty uh, fortuitous. So they are back. I think it's funny how sometimes we get upset with our moms for holding on to a bunch of stuff and other times they hold on to something that you didn't even know that you were going to want later because you just never could have imagined where your life would be 10 years later. And yes, they're faded and they're chipped, but they're sentimental. And just like these baskets, when they get planted, the plants will spill over the side and you won't even see that anymore. Next week on the vlog, it's time to finally get some wood chips moved. And without having to do sales, I see no reason that that should be a problem. So we'll be out in the field quite a lot and I can't wait for you to join us. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and be sure to hit the bell to be notified of when our next video drops.